Hi, this is Dr. Desai from Restore PDX, and today we're going to be talking about whole spine restoration. The topic of regenerative medicine is obviously a hot one. We hear about stem cells and PRP through the media, through friends. Uh, so I'm going to want to talk a little bit about how we utilize that for uh, low back pain and specifically uh, lumbar degenerative disc disease, something that uh, bothers a lot of us. Uh, with low back pain and you hear the term sciatica or pain in the buttocks or shooting down the legs. The regenerative medicine uh, acts as a, a healing force to treat the structures, but before we get into those details, it's really important to understand the uh, anatomy of the spine. And so I have this analogy that try, I try to make things relatively simple and understandable for our patients and for myself as well. And so when we look at the lumbar spine, a great analogy is a building or if you look at the spine in general. So today we're gonna to be focusing on the lumbar spine. And obviously we want a building to be straight, we want it to be uh, structurally sound and stable. And that's how we want our spine. And so if, if the building is stable and strong uh, and somewhat flexible, then we're gonna have a, a really healthy back and not have pain. Unfortunately, you know, as we age, the spine starts to wear down. And so this building analogy makes a lot of sense. So if we think of the spine, we look at this as a, a lumbar spine model, and the white structures here are the bones. And so the bones are stacked on each other. And so each uh, vertebrae is a floor of the building, and it meets the other floor th in three areas. So three joists or connectors. So you can imagine uh, that this floor is like a Lego piece, like this vertebrae, and it's stacked on the other ones and the three spots that they meet are in the one in the front. The front joist is called the disc. That gets all the fame and the fortune, right? We hear disc injury or herniation or tear, those types of things. Um, that's the connector in the front. In the back, there are two connectors called facet joints or facet joints. And there we have one on each side and we have one on each level. So imagine that each floor is stacked on each other and they're meeting at three points. So like tripods stacked on one another. The middle of the building, or the central canal, that's like the elevator shaft of the building. So that's down the middle. That contains the spinal cord and the nerve roots. And then at every floor, there are two elevator doors, one on the right and one on the left, and that's where the nerve roots come out. So the structure of the spine is really simple. It, feels, you know, it sounds like it's gonna be really complicated, but imagine that it's a building, right? You have the vertebrae of the floors, three joists that are connecting, the central elevator shaft and the elevator doors. And if everything's working normally, it's nice and straight and stable, and it has a little bit of flexibility. So what happens with back pain? So the vast majority of back pain occurs when the building starts to become unstable. And what happens is the floor that's meeting the other floor starts to have a wobble and the joists aren't working well. And so is either the disc or the facets start to wear down. It's kind of the chicken or the egg, which one comes first, but whichever it is, the floor starts to become unstable and you can have back pain and what that can cause are injuries of the disc or arthritis of the facet joints. And so that would cause a low back pain issue. And you hear that, you know, uh, annular tears or disc herniations, those types of things. The actual, the disc as we age, unfortunately, starts to lose its shock absorbing capacity. That can happen naturally. Uh, it can happen with what mom and dad gave us. It can happen with injuries or accidents or sports. Uh, the other thing that can happen is once that disc starts to wear out, the facet joints, which are also holding up you know, a component of the floor, they start to wear down or they get inflamed and they can become arthritic just like a, a knee joint and they can become painful. So sometimes we're not sure which one occurs or they're in, they occur in concert. Whatever that may be, those floors start to wear down and that can uh, cause pain and instability. That's uh, one part of it. If that becomes bad enough and the there's some issue with the either the central elevator shaft, right where the spinal canal is, or the elevator doors, then you might start to have nerve issues because that the arthritis or the bulging disc can push on those nerves or irritate those nerves. And then you can have, quote, nerve pain, right? And what, what is that called? In layman's terms is sciatica. So you can have shooting pain down the leg, numbness and tingling, and those types of things. But what's it caused by? It's caused by structural instability of the spine. So what's the standard of care right now which it works sometimes, but I'm not a huge fan of that, is to douse the areas of you know, irritation or inflammation with steroid, right? There's conservative measures or narcotics to mask the pain. And if that doesn't work, you know, there's physical therapy and those types of things, but if that doesn't work, then you may have to have a surgery, 
And so what are they trying to do most of the time now, if we have an unstable uh, spine, they want to fuse it, right? They want to put screws and bolts across that and fix that floor so it doesn't move. And if it doesn't move, it doesn't hurt. The problem is, one, it's a big surgery. Two, when you fuse one level of the building, then all of the stress and movement goes to the levels above and below. And then we get what we call next level disease. And so you fix that one level, it feels good for a while. Uh, if the surgery goes well, you have no complications, that actually can be helpful. The other uh, downside though is after a few years, the next level starts to wear down. And then oftentimes the fusion is you know, expanded. What if we could use regenerative medicine to help stabilize that spine? It sounds fanciful and really cool, but it actually can happen. Uh, but it takes a very you know, uh, structured approach. So one, we have to define where the injury is, and then we have to take those regenerative cells. Either, you know, our passion here is to take your own cells, so from fat, from bone marrow, from uh, PRP, mix that uh, concoction, and then inject those structural elements. So inject the joists that are wearing out. So that'd be inject the disc, inject the facet joints to stabilize those joists. And then the epidural space, you hear about epidural injections. All that means is where the medicine is going. It's not the actual medicine itself. So you can do an epidural with steroid, you can do an epidural with anesthetic or saline. What we use is PRP or platelet-rich plasma. And so where the epidural space is, you know, it goes from stem to stern, is the elevator shaft and the elevator doors. So we treat those with PRP and then the ligamentous structures, the external supports of the spine, we also treat that with PRP to help stabilize. So when you treat all those areas, you're in a sense, you're doing a um, organic or biologic fusion. Now that's not gonna be so powerful where it fuses it and it's not gonna move, but it helps with structural stability. And what we're seeing, not only patients are feeling more stable, they're having less pain, uh, and sometimes that pain is completely resolved, sometimes it's dramatically reduced, um, but we're also seeing when we do follow-up on MRIs that the tissues are healing. So the tears in the discs, they're healing. The, the herniations or bulges, they're reducing. The inflammation or the instability that we see in these facet joints, that's reducing and the tissues are co-opting. Uh, so it's a really exciting therapy um, that we're doing with regenerative medicine. And it's almost, we, we call the whole spine restoration. So in a sense, doing what the surgeon wants to do with the fusion, but doing it in a much more organic fashion and one where you can leave with band-aids. Uh, the recovery time is much less and long term we're seeing really fantastic results.